well, that that has huge implications for MMA because yeah. that's the big debate right now. How long should someone get suspended for, and for how long? You know, how long afterwards should they be considered enhanced? Yeah, you know, like the, they're giving people some pretty significant suspensions now for steroids, like two years. But you know, there's this John Jones case that I'm sure you're aware of. Do you yeah. aware of this? Yeah. yeah, where he's testing positive for the metabolite for a long-term metabolite for a very small dose. He's never tested positive for a short-term metabolite. Which, for testosterone? No, it's not testosterone. It's, um, what is the stuff? Tyranobol? Yeah. Mm. And essentially, it's a tainted supplement. And it's not, it doesn't have any performance-enhancing benefit in terms of like the, the, the amount of the dosage that he's tested positive for. But it's lingering mm. in his system because the protocols for... Um, well, their ability, rather, to detect these metabolites has increased rapidly. Yeah. And over the last year, it's, it's just unbelievably more sensitive to the point where, you know, they're detecting these infinitesimally small levels of these metabolites. And there's also seems to be some sort of a pulsing effect where yeah. your body releases these infinitesimally small metabolites and then doesn't. So you'll test negative, And then the next week, you'll test positive but only for the long-term metabolite, which is an indication that there's no readministration of the performance-enhancing drug. Yeah. So it's real. It's, yeah. it's And everybody's mad. There's so many athletes that are mad about it. And from what you're saying and from this study that Dr. Rhonda Patrick highlighted, it's, you know, it's, it's especially Rightly for someone so. who's willingly taken something. Yeah, it's, it's, there's it's a lot one of, people of those that like once a doper, always a doper type of things. There is that. Yeah. See, the John Jones situation is very tricky because he's so good and he's so dominant that people just assume that he's been doing something his whole career. Yeah. You know, and when you catch him, they're like, aha, that's the reason why he's so good. Yeah. And it may be, but it also might be he's got phenomenal genetics. He has two it's brothers like that are Armstrong, super athletes. Right? He was just the, the best of the guys who were taking drugs. That's a different situation because that's a sport where, at least in the time period where he was competing, everyone was doing something. A hundred percent. They had to go and back to 18 And you don't think the UFC place. is like that. It's not right yeah. there. It's not. It's not. It can't be. They're too strict. The USAD is knocking on doors at 6 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. peeing this cup. And you you do hear about positive tests, but the amount of positive tests versus the negative tests is overwhelming. Way more guys are not doing something. It used to be the opposite. It used to be in the 90s. Everyone was doing something. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking about this on the Fight Companion podcast that a big issue is grappling. Grappling competitions are overrun with steroid users because no one's testing. And these, I mean, it's the smell test is off the fucking charts. You're looking at these guys. They're just ridiculous. Just yeah. jacked. Yeah. Low body fat, super high muscle mass. And they're training jujitsu all the time, too. So you would think it would be very hard for them to maintain muscle mass as well as be able right. to train the way they're training with technique and drills and cardio it's, and all it's those It's very difficult things. to maintain muscle. Yes. I mean, it, any, any concurrent strength endurance training scenario, very yeah, difficult. Very difficult. So th there's a real issue with uh, some of these guys competing this way and then trying to transition into MMA. 